Minions are spawning. You suck at offlane. Don't worry. We're going to run through what you should be doing to get better. I'm Keo, a veteran Paragon player and content creator for Predecessor. I'm here to cover what makes a good offlaner versus a bad one. But don't take just my word for it. I've talked to some big shot offlaners in the community and got their opinions on what can turn you from a feeding useless pile of shit to an unstoppable berserker who defends your teammates from the total massacre of the adversaries. First, this video will teach you the role of offlaner, not hero specific. Future videos will cover that. If you like the video or learn something new, leave a like and subscribe Minions and drop a comment for any helpful tips you think should have been included in this video. Let's begin. The offlane is a one versus one lane where the tank of the team goes head to head in an all out brawl to see who's going to carry their team to victory. The offlane is located on the Cyan buff side of the map, indicated by the Cyan color circle. If you're on the Dawn team, that'll be the right side. If you're on the Dusk team, it'll be the left. The beginning of the match is important. The laning phase. Start by farming your minions. This will be your main source of experience and gold. Each wave of minions contains two different kinds of minions. Melee minions, who attack targets with swords, then there are ranged minions who attack with guns from the rear. They do more damage than the melee minions. When your allied minions and enemy minions clash, the melee minions are first to go down. You as the hero should focus attacking the ranged minions first as these will be the easiest to last hit. To last hit a minion, wait until their health bar is low enough and turns red. This indicates your next basic attack will execute the minion. Doing so will give you a slight boost in gold you received. The laning phase is important here as it will start to give you the lead against your opponent. Besides the normal wave of minions, every third wave spawns a siege wave. A stronger version of a melee and a ranged minion will march down the lane. Slightly increased health and damage, these minions can be devastating if used correctly. Focus on last hitting these minions as they will give you the most gold. A good strategy here is to take out the enemy's siege minions before the enemy does, then go in attacking the opponent. If you still have a siege minion, the damage they output will assist you in defeating your opponent or making them base, giving you breathing room. Lane minions only attack you if you hit the enemy with a basic attack or your ultimate ability. All other abilities do not pull aggression to you. Laning is hard. The biggest challenge for all players is map awareness. Knowing where the enemy players are located is key in your fights. Be aware where the enemy jungler is located. Place wards at key intersections and jungle camps to get vision on where the enemies are and if they are heading to you. If you see the enemy jungler in duo lane, consider being more aggressive to your opponent. However, the opposite is true. If you don't know the location of the enemy jungler, back up towards your tower and play it safe until you know where the jungler is at. Let's talk objectives. Offlane sports the Cyan buff, a quick heal and mana burst for the player who secures it, also giving slight gold. This buff is crucial for lane sustaining. The player who comfortably stays in lane the longest gets the most XP and gold, enabling them to level up and buy items faster. Spawning in at 3 minutes into the match, and 3 minutes after killed, try to take this buff when your minions are pushed to the enemy tower or the enemy is not in lane. This will give you time to secure the objective. Next is Mini Prime, a single target buff that gives the player who killed it a 15% temporary damage increase and minion buff aura to the nearby lane minions. This buff should either go to you or your jungler. Only try taking the buff with your allied jungler and when the enemy offlaner or jungler is killed in awaiting respawn. Also be sure all other enemies are still in their respective lane. Without the enemy jungler, your jungler can use hunt or wild hunt to secure the kill easily. Learn to rotate lanes properly. The best time to rotate is after the first fang tooth death. 
or at around the 15 minute mark when your first tier 1 tower has been taken. Having an enemy tower down gives you breathing room to comfortably walk to other lanes to assist in fights. Lastly, we're going to talk about split pushing lanes. The offlaner is responsible for split pushing lanes. This draws pressure away from your team as it brings enemy players to you. If the enemy team ignores you, that leaves the lane open to take more of their towers. If you see the enemies back up from your allies and move to you, consider basing and regroup with your team while the enemy makes their way to the pushed lane. Ultimately, your job as the offlane is to relieve pressure for your team to secure kills, take objectives, and survive. Harass the enemy squishy targets, keep the enemy tanks busy, and take the damage so your team can clean up. I hope this video helps you jump in and do better as your team's offlaner. Knowledge is key to MOBAs, and the more you know, the better off you and your team will be. Take it slow, remember the fundamentals, be patient, and dominate in late game. Good luck, and see you on the battlefield.